tuned now into the Wednesday night in the Word with Pastor Pascal. I want to thank you for joining us and tuning in on Wednesday night in the Word. Amen. A word that is impactful, informative, and life changing. Amen. We're just glad that you're out there and that you're tuned in to the Word. Amen. And I'm just glad to come to you again uh, this Wednesday night in the Word with Pastor Pascal. And we're going to just talk from the Word tonight. We're going to talk from the Word. Uh, the scripture I've been, I, 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 you know, uh, in Numbers, Numbers chapter 22 is what we've been dealing with, what we've been talking about, uh, what we've been using for a thought, amen, and uh, a thought, just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. Uh, God can't lie, amen, God cannot lie. Uh, the Bible said in Numbers 23, I think 19, God's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Uh, has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he have blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Well, that's just what I've been talking about, about God cannot lie. But we're going to go back to chapter 22, where we've been really dealing with. I think I'm just going to read through here and just give you some little pointers and highlights, because this is a powerful story. I talk about how Balaam, uh, Balaam wanted to get Balaam to curse the people of God because of Israel was on their way to the land of Canaan, to the promised land, and the land that flowed with milk and honey. And they was not going to uh, set camp up in uh, Moab. They were just going through Moab to get the uh, Canaan. And when the king of Moab saw them coming, fear come upon him. You know, he saw how many it was. He had heard about how they had defeated so many other Canaanites and them other Hivites and, and all them other, and the Jerbasite. And so, naturally, he had heard how they had come out of Egypt, <laughs> you know, 2.5 million strong. And then they was heading on their way to uh, the promised land, uh, the land of Canaan. And so what happened to us, he wanted to curse God people. And I'm going to read through this because we've been laying around this for the last three weeks, and I'm going to wrap it up today, that um, you don't have to be afraid of the enemy. If God made a promise to you, he's going to bring it to pass. So he called this prophet, Balaam, to curse God's people. And then Balaam would not come. So he sent, he sent Mesh. And it looks like the scripture said in verse number, number 9, verse 9, 22, 9. And God made unto Balaam and said, and God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with you? Those were the men, the elders that uh, the king uh, Balak had sent over to uh, the king of Moab to try to persuade him to come and curse God's people. And then, but who God bless can't no man curse. Look at verse 10. And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, have sent unto me, saying, Behold, there's a people come out of Egypt. Let me tell you something. When this king saw them people, this is how he described them, the Israelites. And we're God's chosen people today. We are powerful. We are victorious. We're overcomers. We're everything the Word say that we are. We are the Word. We, you know, we're holy. We're clean. We're righteous. We are. If you abide in Him and He abide in you, if you're living in the Word and walking the Word out, you are everything God say that you are according to His Word. If you're obedient to the Word, if you submit it to God, you're holy. You're righteous. Are you hear me? You're full of faith. You're full of power. You're full of victory. You're clean. And that's what you need. To, that's how you need to see yourself. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are powerful, not pitiful. You're overcome or not defeated. You're not cast down. You lifted up. you somebody in God. And it's time to get in the Word and, and find out and, and study this Word and let this Word get in you where you can ask anything in there and let the Word speak. Let the Word speak. The Word is a cleanser. The Word is a healer. The Word is a deliverer. God can't lie. Whatever His Word says, that's who He is. He, he watches over His Word to perform it. So you are everything God say that you are. No weapon form against you shall prosper. No enemy can stop you. God called you to the king, kingdom like he did Esther for a time like this. He called you and I to the kingdom to bless us and to use us. God didn't save me to not use me or bless me. God saved me out of my sin. He saved me out, out of my destruction. You ought to hear me. See, I don't know your testimony, but my testimony was I got saved on a bill truck. I was a bill salesman. I was a salesman from, from, from age um, 17 to 39. All I, I was a salesperson in the city of Jacksonville. Everywhere I went, I was a salesman. I worked for four different uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, four different companies, you know, uh, vendors, vending company. I worked for Intimate Bakery. I worked for Frito Lay. I worked for that was my last job, Frito Lay, the last 13 years. I worked for Anheuser the Bush. I worked for Pepsi Cola when I was just coming out of high school, you know, and so I enjoyed that work. It made a good, uh, uh, it provided for my family. It paid bills, and I took care of my family, and I got saved at 21. When I was on a beer truck, I, I made good money out there on that beer truck. I'm going to be honest with you. and uh, But I'm so glad God saved me. It wasn't about the money. It was about my soul. And I'm glad that I had enough sense to understand that back then. I got saved. I remember a family member said to me when I was pursuing another job, and they said, well, man, you everybody going to uh, buy beer. All these drugs ain't going to stop drinking because you get saved. Well, that wasn't the point. I wasn't a drinker. I got saved. I got delivered. I'm telling you, I went one November 1977. And I tell you, I went to Greater Holy Temple, Church of God in Christ, the late Bishop C.D. Kids, right there on Edgewood. And I mean, man, some of the members of the family members of mine invite me to come to the Sunday night service. And in November, I got saved. I got, I got delivered. I got set free. And I had never been saved before. I mean, I really got saved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I ain't getting no, no just a little dabble do you. I got the full deliverance. I ended up joining the church that night. Stayed there, worked, labor. I was a in the Sunday school uh, uh, work, I worked in the Sunday school. I was an usher, amen. I was on the men usher board. I was on the bus driving committee. I was on the encouragement uh, committee where you called and encouraged folks to come to church. I was just doing some everything. And then anything the brothers had to do about the church, I was willing to help. Now, not knowing I was going to be a pastor one day. All I was, I was just grateful. And you know what was, was a blessing to me when I got saved? When I got saved, I was working on a bill truck, making good money, selling bills. But I mean, I really, when I look back, and I've looked back through the years, I really got saved and God got a hold of me. I remember meeting my wife at church at Greater Holy Temple. And I remember uh, she used to go to church at night when I was dating her and go out to revival service, her and some of her friends. I, now, you got to get this. I knew I was really saved when you when you, when you working late, and I wasn't married to her, I was just dating her. When you were working late and she going to church, and you drive your bill truck at 7 o'clock and park it around the corner uh, and lock it up and go to church. I was like, my God. I, it wasn't just her I was following. I was following the word. I was following her too now. And I was following the word. And so, you know, I got saved. And, I mean, it's been 42 years now. You know, we got married August of 1979. And it's been 42 wonderful years. And we're having a good time. And I'm going to tell you that marriage didn't have its challenge in the beginning. And the reason is because we have to learn how to live with each other. And you have to continue to learn how to live with each other. And you have to believe in each other. And you have to support each other. And you have to forgive each other. And you got to love each other. Why? Because God can't lie. What God put together, no man can sell a Sunday. Set asunder, no man. If God, uh, you know, got to be some leaving and some cleaving. You got to leave your friends. You got to leave your family. And as, as God said, you got to cleave to each other. You got to become one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can't lie. If God word said it, you do it. You walk in it. You obey it. And God going to watch over it. And he going to bring it to pass. So just get in the word. Just abide in the word. And let the word abide in you. We're, we're, we're word people. We love the word. It's, it's through the watching of the word that cleanses us. Don't run away from the word. Run to the word. Hear the word. Uh, read the word, listen to the word, pray the word. Amen. I tell folks all the time, we're in this damn time in 2020, one, you got all kind of avenues and access to the word. You got phones now, iPhone, smartphone. You got you got um, all kind of phones. You got tablets. You got um, uh, laptop, desktop. You got everything. You can you can get the word on any of these uh, 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 devices now. Amen. Electronic devices, and I mean you can get some good word. There's some good word out there every week. I listen. To, I got a, a set of preachers that I listen to that feed me some good word. And the other thing is, I feed myself too. You know, I listen to them preachers, but I get in this word for myself. I open this word up on a daily basis, and I spend time in it. That's how God cleanses us and washes us and heal us and develop us and strengthen us and grow us up when we abide in the Word, when we study the Word. See, the Word is a cleanser. The Word is a deliverer. The Word the, alert, the word will transform you. The Word will change you. But you got to spend time in the Word. To say, study to show yourself approved unto God and work need not be ashamed. So you got to spend time in the Word. That's why I enjoy coming on here doing Wednesday night in the Word. Just get in the Word. You know, you abide in the Word, the Word abide in you. You can ask what you will. And that's how you do it. The more words you hear, the stronger your faith going to grow. The more words you hear, the, the, clean, the cleaner you going to get. Because the word is a cleanser. It's a washer. David said, created me a clean heart, 
and renewing me a right spirit. If my spirit ain't right, I need a renewal. My spirit need to be renewed. Is my attitude not right? I need the anointing on my attitude that I can that I can go higher in the things of God. Are you hearing me? And so, again, when 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 this when this uh, prophet uh, this can't call this prophet to curse God people, he said, I can't curse what God bless. He said, he said, and that's solid. So what he did was, and this is how the enemy is, he kept coming and kept sinning. After these group of men came to try to persuade him to come, listen what kind of offer they offered him, and listen what he told them, and then listen to third, there are three, three, three different uh, conversations in this story. There's, there's the king of Moab, there's the men that came, and there's the prophet that they were trying to persuade. And then there's a the fourth one, Jesus, the son of God. He got involved and began to speak. He was speaking right here. He, in verse 11, he said, Behold. Uh, well, now go down to verse 12. And God said unto Balaam, Thou should not go with them. If God tell you don't associate with folks, don't go with folks, don't get involved with folks that are mixed up in wrongdoing, you better leave them alone. I don't care if they're in the church. Doesn't matter if they're a preacher, a deacon, a lay member, a member, a cousin, a relative. If they're doing wrong, you need to separate yourself. Amen. You need to run and don't look back. You need to get as far away from them as the east is from the rest. Even church folks are not doing right. We as church folk, we need to do the right thing. We need to do the word. We need to do the word. We need to do right by God. We need to do right by each other. We need to do the word. So he said here in verse 12, and God said unto Bill, see, when God speak, we got to listen. Because when God speak, he speak with a purpose. He speak his will. He speak his word, and we got to obey. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So we got when God speak, we need to be listening. And not only do we need to be listening, we need to be obeying. Amen. Look, verse 12 says, and God said unto Balaam, and God said, who said? God. And who said? God. And God said unto Balaam, thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the peoples, for they are blessed. Well, who better to, be, to give you a witness to? Who better to get truth from? That's God himself. Is that a capital G there? I think it is. God told, told the prophet, said, don't you go with him. And then well, God put emphasis on it. I like this. And God said, God is speaking in this day and hour. We need to hear what God's saying. We need to listen to the voice of God. I said, the, the voice of my, uh, 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 we need to hear what God's saying. We need to hear the voice of God. And then we need to respond to it in a right way, and we need to obey it. Verse 12 again, and God said unto Balaam, See, when God tell you don't go somewhere and God tell you don't do something, you better obey God. Because if we ignore the warning, any of us, they're coming judgment. They're going to come uh, destruction. They're going to come something. They, listen, son, that you, you are, God going to have to deal with us, and he will. But, and God dealt with him. God told him in the beginning. Now, you're going to see down in this text, God allowed some things to happen, but God didn't forget about what he told him, verse 12. Thou shalt not go with them. I don't know who you're hanging with, or who you've been hanging out with, or where you've been going, or what places you've been going to. But if you know you're not supposed to be going to those places that are not godly, that doesn't bring glory and honor to God, and doesn't let your light shine, you need to stop going there. Amen. In the church or out of the church, you need to get in God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Verse 12 says, And thou shalt not curse the people. They are blessed. You operating in any... Uh, Witchcraft, are you operating in any work of darkness? I don't care. You, you do. Whom God bless, can't no man curse. Amen. You, you are in the blessing. I want to stay in the blessing. I ain't got nothing to curse. Folks fall out with folks don't like folks. I ain't got nothing to do with that. All I know, God said, be forgive them and love them. Huh. He said, love those that despitefully use you. That's what God said. So we just got to do what the Word say. The Word is important. The Word is powerful. And the word is for us. Verse 13 said, And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land. <laughs> Look at the, the prophet heard from God. Oh, my God. When you hear from God, you're going to tell folks, you got to go now. You can't stay around me. I can't run with you now. I got to go. Or you got to go. Somebody got to go. We got to part. Same way it was with, with uh, Lot and, uh, and Abraham. Man, the Bible say uh, 
Lot in, in chapter 13 of, of Genesis. Say Lot and Abraham uh cows was growing and there was friction between his herb and his herb and to Lot. And I like what the way God handled that. That was the land wasn't big enough. So so God Abraham told him, say, you take one half and I take another half. And we separated. You know, and once they separated, then God told Abraham, lift up your eyes and look out on the plains of Jordan. Everywhere your eyes see, I give it to you. Everywhere the soles of your foot trot. See, when God bless you, you, you don't have to try to uh, 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 take a shortcut. You don't have to try to pay somebody to get you blessed. Just do the word, obey the word, do what God says, and God will bless. He's a man, he can't lie. Look at it. Read if you want to. Numbers 22, verses uh, 18 and 19. God can't lie. If God said it, that's sell it. So look what he said again in verse 13. I told him, uh, and, and Balaam rolled up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balite, the men that were sent, get you into your land. Leave now, for the Lord refuses. I like that. The Lord refuses to give me permission to go with you. Text said leave. But if you read in the NIV, it says permission. If you read in the Amplified Bible, it says that he won't give me permission. He refused to let, let me go. And the prince of Moab rose up. And the princes of Moab, thank you, Lord, rose up and they went unto Balak and said unto Balaam and said, and said, come. Balaam refused to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes. And watch this, just like the enemy, more and more honorable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Isn't that something? He said, more and more honorable. That's what he did. My Lord. I'm telling you something. You, when God tell you don't go somewhere, you better not go nowhere. When God tell you don't, 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 don't do a certain thing, we better obey God. Look at it again. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And Balak sent yet again princes. He sent more. He doubled up. That's what the enemy do. He'll double up on you. He's trying to persuade you, and you need to come on now. And then let me show you what they said when they come. Let's look at the text, verse 15. More and more honorable than they. And then look, verse 16 said, And they came to Balaam and said unto him, Thus said Balak, the son of Zippor. Now this is them talking to Balaam. And they, they come and say, He thought God was going to be moved because uh, Balak sent more men and more honorable and more 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 respected. It didn't matter. But listen, listen, what, listen to the challenge they offered him, and listen at the response that he gave to him. Apparently, God got got through to Balaam that he knew he might not be fooled with the with, with, with Balak, the king of Moab. Listen to what he said. And they came to Balaam and said unto him, Thus said Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder. You from coming unto me. The word that's a D in the NIV, I mean in the uh, King James. Don't let nothing hinder you. See, if the enemy can't get you one way, you try to come another way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And my Bible says you better be prayerful and watchful. Watch as well as pray. Your life depends on this. You want to stay safe. You want to stay with God. I've been telling folks everywhere I go, I've been preaching. It's time to get clean. It's time to get holy. It's time to get righteous. It's time to let God do a work in us. It's time to get back on the altar. It's time to repent. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. We're sorry for our sin, God. We're sorry for our shortcoming, God. We're sorry for our weakness, God. We're sorry for our behavior, God. Oh, God, have mercy on us, God. Wash us in your blood, God. You know I did some things, I said some things, I shouldn't have said, God, but cleanse me, God. Deliver me, God. Free me, God, from the bondage of the enemy, God. Work on my mind. Work on my heart, God. Oh, God, work on the, on the tongue. And I'll say the right thing. Now, listen what the offer of the king said back to him. He said, I will, the king told them, tell him, say, tell him, for I will promote thee unto very great honor. And I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. What you want? Just tell me what you want. I'll do it. Ain't no time to sell out to the enemy. You can't take no wooden nickels. <laughs> you, you, you can't take no bribe. 
and you definitely can't take no shortcut. And you can't run with the enemy. Because, come on now. You know what came to me? How can the blind lead the blind? The enemy in this case is nothing but the blind. The scripture say the blind will lead you in addition. We both will fall in if you follow him. You better get in the light and you better stay in the light. The Bible says as you see the light, walk there in it. Stay in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. <laughs> hey, come on now. Because when night comes, can't no man work. You better stay in the light and let the light stay in you. Amen. And look what he said. For I will promote thee unto very great honor. No, he's going to parade him among the uh, Moabites, and I will do whatsoever. He said, you just name your price. Listen, we ain't got no price. We sold out to God. You, you don't have enough to pay us. These blessings, this peace, this favor, this healing, this peace of mind I got, this deliverance, you, you, uh, uh, the enemy doesn't have nothing to compare with God. All the, uh, as long as we've been walking with God, all God have done for us, and the enemy is going to try to persuade us to leave the family of God and do something evil. This is, this is what the man of God said. I like how he stood up. He listened to him. Look at the text. And I would do, this, look at the text. Whatsoever thou says unto me, come therefore, I pray thee, and curse me, this people. The whole thing was, it was warfare, we know. For one thing. But the second thing was the Moabite was afraid of the Israelite. And people, you don't have to say nothing. You don't have to do that. Israel didn't do nothing but just come their direction. They were just traveling in that direction. And as they was going to the land that flowed milk and honey, the enemy saw them coming and initiated warfare out of fear, out of what they had heard. Oh, they was, Israel was awesome now because they had an awesome God. See, one thing I know about God, God don't bring you out and then leave you. When he brought them out of Egypt, he brought them out with a high hand. I told someone the other day we was talking, I said, yeah, it was 400 plus, 430 years they were in bondage. But I tell you what, when they walked out of Egypt, they didn't walk out broke. They didn't walk out defeated. But they, walk out, they walked out, they walked out with all the spoils, the silver and the gold, and they had enough. Amen, somebody. So I don't know. They might have 430 years of uh, 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 spoils and gold and silver that they got. I tell you what, God, God know how to bless you, boy. When He, when God delivers you, you ain't going to stay broke. You just obey the word and do what he say and go and say. Even when Israel got out there in, 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 in the wilderness, they, they got mad and they want to try to uh, 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 approach the man of God and say, hey, Moses, what you doing? We have brought us out here to die. See, we, we we don't see what the leaders see. We see what we want to see. But see, the leader, your leader see what God sees. Oh, God, I felt that. Your leader hear what God is saying. Your leader going to do what God is saying. You about, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you about to hear me. You about to keep your eyes on God and your leader. Are you hearing me? They got there in that wilderness. They went to complaining. They went to murmuring. and said, Moses, we trapped in. God getting ready to do a miracle, and y'all talking about what you see. You don't see what the leaders see. God getting ready to do a miracle in the midst of bringing them out. of It's a miracle that they're bringing them out of bondage 430 years. It's a miracle that they're walking out with the spoils, but it's another miracle finna occur in their, in their traveling. They don't see it. God sees it, and he going to com convey it convey it to the, the leader. So they turn around and say, when they got out there, they say, hold up. The Red Sea before us, wilderness on both sides of us, and Pharaoh army is coming out. By that time, Pharaoh army, had, Pharaoh had come to us up and said, hey, what we done did? Let's go get him. He got all this chariot and all this strong horsemen. And they was in pursuit of the Israelite. But you know what? I'm going to say this. Don't murmur and complain against your leader. I don't know who I'm talking to. Keep your hands and keep your mouth off God's leadership. The Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. You ain't got to tell me I'm preaching now, and I'm prophesying to you right now. You want to be blessed, leave God people. I don't care if, they, if they're in error, they go wrong. Pray for them. Because you done been in error and you done been wrong. And somebody prayed for us. We ain't all, all been right all the time. Me too, all of us. But when we came to repent and when we come to ourselves, so God told Moses, so you tell them, I said, hold their peace. And then you take them forward. God knows what he's doing. I know who I'm talking to. Hold your peace. 
and go forward. Get, get, connect with your leader. Pray for your leader. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe in your leader. Encourage your leader. Bless your leader. Stop talking about him, but, but be a blessing to him. If you don't have no financial blessing, be a blessing in attendance. Be a blessing in faithfulness. Be dutiful in the work and labor of the ministry. If, you, if you're working in a position in the church, become faithful. If you're faithful, stay steadfast, stay strong, encourage others. I'm just talking Wednesday night in the Word. It ain't about Pastor Pascal. We're just talking about Wednesday night. We're just talking about the Word. That's all. But the Word is good. The Word is a healer. It's a deliverer. And the Word is a corrector. It'll correct us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, let me get through my text right quick. He said, verse 17, for I promote thee. Very great honor. Well, go down to verse 18. And Balaam answered and said unto the servant, Balak, if ba that's, he took, that's what he told Balak's servant. If Balak will give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the words of the Lord my God to do less or more. Man, I want to tell you something. This man had got his, he had got his delivered. He, he said more honorable people, they said more people, they said more good, they said more right, they said more everything trying to persuade him. But when you heard from God, can't nobody get you to move off God's word, off the promise of God. Can't nobody get you to move. When you've heard from God, when God has spoken, you, you will not be moved. And I tell you what, it might look like pressure coming. It might not look like it's going to come through. But I tell you what, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stay in a holy place. Stay in a righteous place. So he said, we'll give this house. He said, if you give me a house full of silver, Go, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, to do less or more. Are you hearing me? Well, I'm going to put a pen right there, and we're going to pray and, and, and uh, bring that to an end. We'll pick this up next week at chapter 19, as the Lord says so, after the Lord say the same. I want to tell you, you're in a good place. This is a place of victory. It's a place of overcoming, a place of, of, of blessings, a place of, of increase. This is a season of release and recovery. God's going to help you recover everything that the enemy tried to steal from you. I stole it from you. And he's going to release some increases in your life. So I want you to believe God. If you're sick, believe him for your healing. If you're depressed, believe him for your deliverance. If you got family problems, believe him to make your family whole. If you got financial problems, believe him to make your financial whole. That you and I would do the right thing according to the word concerning our finances. Amen. And any other area, get the word and put the word on it. And don't just put the word on it. Abide in the word. Walk it out. Believe the word and confess the word and stand on the word and trust the word of the living God. And watch God bring it to pass. That's the kind of God we, we serve. He cannot lie. If he said it, he'll bring it to pass. If he promised it, he'll do it. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for those that are out there on the other side of this broadcast that are listening to this uh, uh, broadcast tonight, God, and that you'll bless them uh, today, God, whatever time or season that's been aired, God, that you will reverse situation, God, that you'll break and destroy the stronghold, God, that bind, God, take authority over it. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We plead the blood against you, God. Save, deliver, and set free, God, and make whole in Jesus' name. Well, I call you blessed, and the next time we see you, I call you blessed, and just obey God, serve God, and walk with God in Jesus' name.